Hello everyone. Welcome back to our channel, Canada Immigration. We hope you're doing great. Well in this video, we'll talk about DR to PR, Can International Students in Canada, Changes to British Columbia PNP, Canada PR from India? In the corridors of power and in the hearts of citizens, a contentious debate rages on, will Canada halt immigration? Navigating the intricacies of immigration policies and regulations can be a daunting task, especially for international students aspiring to build their careers in Canada or individuals seeking to reunite with family members through sponsorship programs. In this segment, we delve into several pressing topics surrounding immigration in Canada, shedding light on questions such as work restrictions for international students, updates to provincial immigration programs, economic immigration fees, and the sponsorship eligibility criteria for siblings aiming for permanent residency from India. So, to get all the information, pay attention and watch the video through to the end please hit like and subscribe, and don't forget to push the notification bell for upcoming episodes. So, without any further delay, let's jump into the video. Can international students in Canada work more than 40 hours? Facebook sharing button share Twitter sharing button tweet WhatsApp sharing button Sharag mail sharing button email Reddit sharing button share LinkedIn sharing button share Sharathi sharing button share. The full-time work hours policy by Immigration, Refugees, and Citizenship Canada IRCC, for certain international students in Canada will come to an end on April 30, 2024. Multiple readers have reached out to inquire about the number of hours international students can work after April 30th and if students in Canada can work more than 40 hours or not. In this article, we will delve into important information on working hours for international students in Canada and scenarios where students can work more than 40 hours. International Students Working Hours After April 30th under the temporary public policy that IRCC introduced, only a specific cohort of international students were qualified to work full-time until April 30th. Click here to see the eligibility for full-time work. This full-time work hours policy is not expected to extend beyond the state, but IRCC did mention that they are looking into future options such as increasing off-campus employment hours for students to 30 hours per week. While all these future options are still being explored, there is a possibility of an announcement around April 30th regarding them. Or it may be after that since IRCC usually has delayed responses. Or, in the worst case, there may not be any change to the work hour policy for students at all. Generally, students will only be allowed to work off campus for up to 20 hours per week while their class is in session, until or unless a new 30-hour work hour policy is introduced. You can work as an international student in Canada only if your study permit specifies that you can work on or off campus. So it is important to read the conditions mentioned on your permit. Can international students work more than 40 hours in Canada? During scheduled breaks, like winter and summer holidays, as well as during fall or spring reading week, students can work full time off campus. It's also possible to take on more hours or work two part time jobs that add up to this full time work. It is important to note that students are expected to maintain their full-time student status before and after the break. Students cannot work during the gap preceding their first semester of study. Apart from the above listed scenarios, students are allowed to work full-time even while their class is in session if they are employed by an employer in an on-campus work setting. If you any query please contact us on Instagram and Gmail. What does on-campus work include? On-campus indicates that you can work in any of the buildings on your school campus. If your school has multiple campuses, you may only be able to work on the one where you are currently enrolled. As per IRCC, an on-campus employer can be 1. The school 2. A faculty member 3. A student organization 4. Yourself if you run a business that is physically located on campus, for example, you own a coffee shop on campus 5. A private business or 6. A private contractor that provides on-campus services to the school 7. How many hours constitute full-time work? As per the IRCC, there is no standard amount of hours per week that constitutes full-time work. However, your employers must comply with all provincial regulations governing overtime compensation and shift breaks. What happens if a student works more than 20 hours off-campus while class is in session? Working more than 20 hours per week constitutes a violation of the student's study permit requirements. By doing so, students risk losing their status and can be denied a study or work permit in the future. They may also be asked to leave the country. How many hours student can work in Canada? 20 hours per week during regular academic sessions and full-time during scheduled breaks. There is no set definition for full-time, so students can work any number of hours during scheduled breaks. Three key changes to British Columbia PNP immigration in 2024-2025. to 2025. 
the British Columbia PNP has long stood as a pillar of opportunity for skilled workers and international students alike. Now, as we step into the future, British Columbia introduces three new updates to redefine pathways for aspiring individuals seeking to call this province their home. In today's blog, we study the recent changes introduced by British Columbia BC, in its provincial nominee program PNP. These modifications are aimed at streamlining pathways for international workers and students. Let's delve into the intricacies of these new updates and how they might impact aspiring immigrants. If you any query please contact us on Instagram and Gmail. Three key changes in British Columbia immigration. British Columbia is revamping its PNP selection criteria to better align with the province's economic needs. The updates will emphasize the importance of education, work experience, and language proficiency in determining British Columbia PNP eligibility. By doing so, the province aims to ensure that nominees are equipped with the necessary tools for success in the British Columbia job market. Introduction of three new streams One of the most significant changes involves the introduction of three new streams tailored to different levels of education. 1. Bachelor's Stream The Bachelor's Stream caters to recent graduates holding bachelor's degrees from recognized post-secondary institutions. Eligible candidates must also possess a confirmed full-time employment offer in British Columbia. 2. Master's Stream the master's stream targets individuals with master's degrees from approved post-secondary institutions. Applicants must have at least one year of full-time work experience in a skilled occupation to qualify for this stream. 3. Doctorate Stream The doctorate stream is designed for graduates and candidates pursuing doctoral-level studies at accredited post-secondary institutions. Unlike the other streams, individuals applying to this track do not necessarily need prior work experience. Strengthened Language Requirements to ensure that nominees possess adequate language skills, British Columbia is raising the minimum language proficiency level for all BC PNP streams. Most notably, the new graduate streams will require a Canadian language benchmark, CLB, 8 proficiency. If you any query please contact us on Instagram and Gmail. Focus on in-demand occupations. The revised BC PNP prioritizes occupations that are in high demand within the province. Industries such as healthcare, construction, and early childhood education will receive special attention, as they play a crucial role in driving BC's economic growth and development. Launch date and additional information. The three new BC PNP streams for international students are scheduled to launch in January 2025. Detailed guidelines outlining the program modifications will be made available in late 2024, with comprehensive criteria published in the Skills Immigration Program Guide by January 2025. British Columbia's latest updates to its provincial nominee program signify a concerted effort to attract and retain talented individuals who can contribute to the province's prosperity. By refining selection criteria, introducing new streams, and prioritizing key sectors, BC aims to enhance the overall effectiveness of its immigration system while ensuring the seamless arrival of newcomers into the local community. Canada's economic immigration fees for 2024 DR to PR, and other applications and services. The year 2023 witnessed a remarkable influx of over 471,550 new permanent residents PRs, surpassing the targeted numbers in the Immigration Levels Plan 2023 to 2025 by over 6,000 individuals. For aspirants aspiring on the journey to permanent residency in Canada, understanding the intricacies of associated Canadian immigration fees is paramount. The following breakdown reveals the 2024 fee structure for economic immigration pathways as outlined by Immigration. Refugees and Citizenship Canada IRCC. Please note that all figures mentioned are in Canadian dollars. If you any query please contact us on Instagram and Gmail. Canada Immigration Fees Economic Pathways The economic immigration landscape encompasses diverse routes, each demanding specific fees. Whether one is venturing through Canada's Agri-Food Pilot, Atlantic Immigration Pilot, Express Entry Streams, Provincial Nominee Programs, PNPs, or other avenues. The following fees apply. Application processing fee, $850. Spouse or partner, processing fee, $850. Dependent child, $230, per child. Refer to IRCC's glossary for a detailed definition of a dependent child. Maximize your IELTS score. 1. Start your English journey. Learn English with British Council teachers, up to 10% off. 2. English online self-study course. Learn English at your own pace with bite-sized exercises up to 10% off. 3. Prepare for IELTS with the experts. Get the score you need with the co-creator of the IELTS test up to 15% off. 
DR to PR pathway fee structure. For foreign nationals transitioning from temporary resident, DR, status to PR after residing in Canada on study or work permits, a modified fee structure is in place. Application processing fee, $570. Spouse or partner, processing fee, $570. Dependent child, $155. Per child, if you any query please contact us on Instagram and Gmail. Other permanent residence fees. Beyond the application process, additional fees come into play. Permanent resident cards, $50. This identification document validates a foreign national's PR status, serving as a travel document for entry into Canada. Permanent resident travel document, PRTD, $50, essential for travel when a valid PR card is unavailable, ensuring smooth boarding onto flights or other modes of transport to Canada. Write a permanent residence fee, RPRF. $515, a crucial fee payable upon application approval, augmenting the total application processing fee to $1,365. Exceptions apply, and refunds are possible under specific circumstances. Biometrics fee, the fee, per person, is $85 and the fee for more than two people would be $170. It's imperative to note that staying informed about Canadian immigration fees is not only a procedural necessity but a strategic move for a seamless immigration journey. As the IRCC continues to shape immigration policies, applicants are advised to check for any updates to the fee structure for 2024. Explore the Canadian immigration system wisely, armed with a comprehensive understanding of the economic immigration fees. Your pathway to permanent residence awaits, paved with due diligence and financial prudence. Nova Scotia Immigration Nova Scotia is a unique province which is located in Canada's Maritimes region. Located on the eastern side of the country, it consists of the Nova Scotia Peninsula, Cape Breton Island, and a number of smaller islands. The capital city, Halifax, is the primary center of economic activity in the province. Its beautiful and safe communities, vibrant cultural scene, excellent universities, and hospitals make Nova Scotia an ideal destination for immigrants. Besides the provincial scenic beauty, there exists a wide range of benefits offered by Nova Scotian immigration programs and streams. Nova Scotia Express Entry System Nova Scotia offers a variety of immigration options, with express entry being the easiest. As part of this system, Nova Scotia Nominees Program NSNP, chooses foreign nationals with skills that are needed by the local economy. There are two ways to acquire a Nova Scotia PNP nomination certificate. One way is by submitting an expression of interest EOI, directly to the Nova Scotia Office of Immigration outside of express entry. Candidates are assessed based on a points grid, and eligible candidates are invited to apply to the NSPNP. The other option is to create an express entry profile and indicate an interest in Nova Scotia through the immigration system. Candidates who receive an invitation to apply ITA, from Immigration Nova Scotia can then apply to the NSNP directly. If you any query please contact us on Instagram and Gmail. Upon successful nomination, they are awarded 600 points under the Express Entry Comprehensive Ranking System CRS, which significantly increases their chances of being selected for Canada Permanent Residency in the next Express Entry draw. The Nova Scotian immigration process is expedited through Express Entry, allowing immigrants to move to Canada more quickly. Nova Scotia Provincial Nominee Program The Nova Scotia Provincial Nominee Program NSPNP, is designed for skilled workers, entrepreneurs, and international graduates who wish to settle in the province permanently. It addresses the province's labor market needs and contributes to its economic growth by inviting candidates with the right skills and experience. The NSPNP offers several immigration streams, including 1. Nova Scotia Demand, Express Entry Stream 2. Nova Scotia Experience, Express S Entry Stream 3. Skilled Worker Stream and Family Business Worker Stream there may have been updates or changes to the Nova Scotia immigration programs. Thus, it is always recommended to refer to our official website for the most up-to-date and accurate information. Who can sponsor siblings for Canada PR from India? The Canadian government allows permanent residents and citizens of Canada to sponsor their family members for permanent residence in Canada. This can be seen in the Immigration Levels Plan 2024-2026, which aims to welcome 114,000 immigrants under the Family Sponsorship Program in 2024. By 2026, this number will rise to 118,000. Under the Family Sponsorship Program, you can sponsor your spouse, common-law partner, conjugal partner, and dependent children. But what about siblings? Who can act as a sponsor? 
To be eligible to sponsor family members for Canada PR from India, you must 1. Your age must be at least 18 years. 2. You should be a permanent resident, a Canadian citizen, or an individual registered as an Indian under the Canadian Indian Act in Canada. 3. You must be living in Canada unless you are eligible to sponsor your family members without being physically present in Canada and intend to return to Canada when the sponsored persons arrive in the country. 4. Sign an undertaking to provide basic facilities to the sponsored persons for a certain period. 5. You must have enough funds to support the sponsored individuals. Conditions to sponsor siblings to Canada from India as PR. You can sponsor relatives such as a brother, sister, aunt, or uncle in certain situations only. Your siblings can only be sponsored for Canada PR from India if they meet the criteria set by the Canadian government. You can sponsor your siblings for Canada PR if 1. They are related to you by blood or adoption. 2. Both of their mother and father are no longer alive. 3. They are under 18 years of age. 4. They are not married or in a common law or conjugal relationship. You cannot sponsor your siblings for Canada PR if 1. One of their parents is alive. 2. No one has any information about the parent's location. 3. Their parents have abandoned them. 4. Someone else is supporting them while one or both parents are alive. 5. Their parent is in prison or otherwise imprisoned. Ways to bring your siblings to Canada if they cannot be sponsored. Siblings don't often qualify for sponsorship. Therefore, you must find other pathways through which they can apply for Canada immigration and become a permanent resident. Here are your best options. Option 1. Study Permit. Applying for a study permit is the best way to bring your siblings to Canada. After completing studies, it usually takes two to three years to get PR status on average. But if you are up for the challenge, you're good to go. Do this. Step 1. Help your sibling look for diploma, degree, or certificate courses in designated learning institutions DLIs, that they are willing to study. DLIs are the only educational institutions in Canada which accept international students. The length of the study program must be at least 8 months. If you any query please contact us on Instagram and Gmail. Step 2. Upon completing a study program successfully, your sibling will be eligible to apply for a post-graduation work permit PGWP. A PGWP enables international students to gain valuable Canadian work experience, essential for your PR application. Step 3. With a PGWP in hand, they can work for any employer in Canada. Your sibling requires at least 12 months of work experience in a full-time, skilled occupation, listed under the National Occupational Classification NOC, Code 0, A, or B. Step 4. Apply for Canada PR with 12 months of experience. Their options include Canadian Experience Class CEC, Provincial Nominee Programs PNPs, and Quebec Immigration. Step 5. If your sibling receives an invitation to apply ITA, based on their points in the CRS score calculator, they can submit a complete PR application. The processing of their application via express entry will take 5 to 6 months. Once your documents are verified and IRCC is satisfied, they will receive a confirmation of permanent residence COPR, allowed to live and work in Canada. Option 2. Lumia approved work permits. If your siblings do not want to pursue an educational route in Canada, another way to help them is to obtain an Lumia approved job offer in Canada. Employers in Canada always look for candidates with work experience and skills who can meet the local labor gaps. To hire workers from foreign nationals, employers have to get a Labor Market Impact Assessment LMIA, from the Canadian government. They must provide proof that they were unable to fill the positions for certain roles with local residents and thus need to hire foreign workers, without affecting Canada's economy. If the government approves this request, your sibling will be allowed to build eligibility for Canadian PR through one of the country's economic immigration programs. As Canada continues to attract individuals from around the globe with its promising opportunities and inclusive immigration policies, staying informed about the latest updates and regulations is crucial for a successful immigration journey. Whether you're a student looking to maximize work opportunities, a prospective immigrant exploring provincial immigration pathways, or a sponsor hoping to reunite with loved ones, understanding these key aspects can greatly facilitate your transition into Canadian life. If you any query please contact us on Instagram and Gmail. That is all for today, in this video. What are your thoughts on this? Please let us know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching the entire video. Hopefully, the information is useful to you. See you later, in the next video. Till then, take care. Dad. 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 Dad.